Gail Saunders, Chris Malley, back at it like a draft addict. Uh, talk to prospect, talking to linebacker Jabril Cox out of LSU, or if you're an NDSU fan, you might say NDSU. Overall, one of the uh, most stickiest in coverage, uh, Jabril Cox. You, you talk about um, new age linebackers. Jabril Cox could be that guy in space for you. You know, you have your, you know, you all have all, you have all types of linebackers in this draft, but uh, overall Jabril Cox is one of those guys that you might feel comfortable leaving him on an island in space, like on an island with a running back or a tight end, a uh, man in the slot, a guy with 900 plus snaps in the slot. That's crazy. Uh, I feel like at the end of the day, Jabril Cox gives you a d- dimension that a lot of linebackers uh, that are his size, 6'3", 233. I've heard 6'4", 6'3". But just a guy with his size and speed, you love. Um, also, what you also love, his production. He's been there, done that. Three years with NDSU, three national championships. Goes to LSU, um, You know, decides to continue his career there. He could have opted for the NFL, but, you know, he, he took his talents to the next level and still shined. I know Chris is a big LSU fan. You know, this is, you know, one of your prospects, some guy that you've watched since he was on your favorite college team. How are we feeling about Jabril? So, Gail, I mean, this is the guy that everyone's really ex- excited to talk about because you saw him go from North Dakota State and go to LSU, and he made a huge jump. I mean, I think it was the smartest thing for his career because he finally showed that he could stick with the SEC guys. And, it, I mean, he is what he is. He showed that he is a new age linebacker. He's extremely talented in coverage. Uh, he There's some things he needs to work on as a true linebacker, a three-down linebacker, but coverage-wise, I mean, he's almost like having a really large uh, nickel corner out there. I mean, you saw him against SEC guys, and then luckily, Gail and I were lucky enough to be at the Senior Bowl virtually this year, and he shined all week. I mean, he really, really turned heads there, and people are really excited, and people are even giving him a second-round grade now. I still think that his value really is in the third, where the Eagles have two picks, but I I think that Jabril Cox definitely has moved into the second-round discussion for a lot of people, and rightfully so. Super athletic twitchy his lateral movement is crazy and we're really excited to talk about him today you, you talk about missing out on a jeremy chin do the eagles come back around this time and like hey man maybe maybe we need to go there you think about davion taylor um you think about um you know our linebackers in, in place um do we have a linebacker in coverage that we trust uh jabril Cox. i was hoping you know, in mock drafts, you get third round. You're like, ah, there's my guy. He's in the third round. But I, I don't. I have a feeling he might go higher. And it, the funny thing is, like, you you ask a linebacker to do certain things, whether it be stack and shed. Uh, you know, Phil come up and make the solid tackles. You know, he'll come up and make the tackles, wrap you up. But will he wrap you up like a Ray Lewis? No. Uh, will he? You know, come up and um be around the football yeah um but sometimes i like my linebackers to show up violently i don't want them to like knock on the door i want them to kick the door in um and say hey i am here i don't know if he's that kind of guy but he's he's a productive guy and when when you want him to like run down somebody he'll be the first guy breathing down your neck so um overall uh just some of his his background he played quarterback in high school, played linebacker and safety. And you talk about, you know, being his size. Jabril Cox was a quarterback, a dual threat. I mean, this guy was uh, out there throwing touchdowns and also being a uh, athlete of the of the athlete of the week over at Raytown South. You're wondering why he didn't get he was on the radars early. He tore his ACL his junior year, and some of the, some of the some of the teams. Um, college just backed off a little bit. So, you know, he, he was rebounding from that um, torn ACL in his junior year. And then, um, you know, the FCS teams were calling. And NDSU, home of Carson Wentz, let us remind you. One thing that wasn't mentioned by some people, he had a torn lab- labrum his his uh, junior year over at uh, NDSU. And if you're looking at some of the tape, you see him kind of like, 
you know, sometimes you don't know if players are playing through injury. Could that torn labrum been an issue? Uh, he said he wouldn't been able – he had to get surgery on that, but if he wouldn't been able to pre- – prep for the NFL draft. So it was a great idea for him to, you know, come back for another year and, and solidify his draft stock. But overall, I think one thing that make make needs to be made mention is that leadership qualities are strong with him. You know, two time captain in high school, a captain at NDSU, and then at LSU also captain. I mean it's gotta that it's gotta say something for him as a leader on the football team. Yeah, when you think about uh, LSU, you think about just these incredible defenders that do make it at the next level. I mean, you got Tyran Matthew, you have Devin White, uh, Patrick Queen, Quan Alexander, like all these guys, Tredavious White, and you want a piece of that. Jabril Cox, we were highlighting in the beginning of the video that he is the NFL, uh, the new NFL linebacker. He's a coverage guy. Uh, The Eagles fans... We know that we have the Singletons, who is really good at run stopping. We know that we have the um, T.J. Edwards, who's solid at run stopping. And then we also know that we just want Nate Gary get torched all year. I mean, we had Nate Gary trying to cover Clay, Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool, who was taking on number one cornerbacks. Um, Jabril Cox, he, he's maybe he can't stop Chase Claypool, but he's a guy that you actually understand being on a Chase Claypool. Jabril Cox... He has 1,114 career coverage snaps. He's only allowed two touchdowns and he has eight interceptions. He's a phenomenal coverage linebacker. Uh, he, he lines up in the slot. He's like having almost like a large safety at 6'3", 235, but he's really twitchy. I, I do think he can clean up some stuff in the run game, but he's active. It's not lack of um, effort there. It's just some footwork stuff that he can work on with some coaching. If you have a plan for him, you know, if he's going to play a uh, weak side, if you want a guy, you know, chasing someone down, he could be that guy. It, you know, if you have some big boys in front of him that can uh, take care of the muscle, he doesn't have to do much and let him go run and, and be free and, and make those tackles. I think that would be a better situation for him. like if you're sitting here thinking that he's going to plug holes, stack and shed some of these NFL linemen. Uh, I don't know about that. I think, um, you know, he's got the size for it um, again, but y- you just want to see him mature as a player at the next level. Hopefully he gets there. Um, and then this it's kind of, you kind of think about Davon um, Taylor um, and think about what he means to the Eagles right now. Do we know who he is yet as a player? Not yet. Um, but you're hoping that, you know, bringing a Jabril Cox is a reason why Davion Taylor uh, did, you know, is not working out if that's an idea or a theory or whatever. Uh, but either way, having that kind of speed um, between Davion Taylor and Jabril Cox on the field, you know, in theory, that's great. Uh, I mean, ideally, you know, you see some of these linebackers out here that you're like, oh, man, I just would love just for you to man the middle, be a three down thumper, uh, be great in coverage. Those guys are hard to come by. Um, and again, in the first round where we're picking, uh, we're not picking a linebacker. So all you uh, Parsons truthers at six, give it a rest. We love Micah Parsons, and don't get me wrong, there are a ton of linebackers in this draft. This is one of my favorite linebackers uh, group ever. I mean, look, there's uh, Jeremiah Owuma Kroma uh, from uh, Notre Dame. Sorry, name's a mouthful. Nick Bolton from Uso Missouri. Roma. Yeah. Uh, Zavin Collins from Tulsa. I I mean, it's a crazy linebacker group. There's a reason why we're talking about Jabril Cox as like a third round, uh, late second round pick, uh, because he's a little bit of a project, but that being said, he is the best cover uh, linebacker, and he's kind of exactly what the Eagles want. And definitely have to highlight him. I mean, he was one of the best players at the Senior Bowl, and he would be a true value guy because the Eagles are definitely not going linebacker in the first. That's where we should get the cornerbacks and the wide receiver skill guys there. And then you're looking for Jabril Cox in the second or the third. That's why we're highlighting him. And um, we have plenty of film that we're going to go over. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump right into it. So uh, we're – when you talk about Jabril Cox, you really think about his coverage skills right here. This is a great example. This is him on the outside. So highlighting him right here. uh, I mean, you can just see how much uh, range he has as a linebacker and he diagnoses plays so fast. I mean, at 
LSU, North Dakota State, like he's he's on it. He sees the guy going right out to the flat, gets out there real fast, makes the tackle. That's his career. That's what he does all the time. Uh, here's another great play. This is at uh, LSU. There's a replay on this as well. Pick six right here. I mean, you're. I'm going to show you from another angle right here, but he's just so fast at diagnosing these plays. So here he is, number 19 on the right side of the screen for you. Pre-snap communication. They talk, talk to play over. And right here, flips the hips, gets lateral, touchdown. I mean, that that's what that's what he's all about. So we talked about the good. Um, here's some of the bad. So the stuff he needs to clean up in the run game right here. So here's your real cox on the left side of the field. This slowed down for you. So right here, he he goes in, he sees the run, he diagnoses it, he tries to fill the hole, and he kind of freezes up. And then the worst part is that he kind of can just like dead he dead legs himself uh in his feet. I mean he's in position to at least force the play maybe back inside right here, but he number 19 just stops, leaves his feet, falls, misses the tackle. And that's something that um don't get me wrong. Linebackers, even the best, they make mistakes like that all the time. But that's something that comes up in his film more often than not when talking about Jabril Cox. He needs to clean up stuff in the run game. He is a solid linebacker. Don't don't be discouraged by just one clip. He's a really good linebacker. He started for LSU, and he's a three-time national champion for a reason at North Dakota State. There's just some things he needs to clean up, but coverage-wise, he's phenomenal. I mean, the thing about you know some of those uh, plays in space – you know, when, uh, when I'm coming downhill in the run game, I seen the, you know, some wrong angles that he's taken. Um, I'd like him to diagnose quicker, um, disengage and kind of make the play um, on this play. You know, I'll, I'll start with the bad first. Not everything's always good, uh, but it's, it's, it's part of his profile here. Um, you have two plays here. You, you know, he sees the play happening. Um, he does. He's not able to disengage. Takes kind of a, a wrong angle on the first play, and then then on the second play, uh, again getting you know getting washed. Like <laughs> you don't want, ever want to see your linebackers get washed. And here in Philly, we have seen our our linebackers get washed. But here we go. Um, you know, here he sees the play happen, and he took the wrong angle. Like if he would have just filled that hole there. He saw it right the first time, it got right into the hole and made the play. On this play, he gets washed right out of the way by 54, and there go opens the floodgates. Um, so it's like you know, that's that's part of his game that he you, you want to see him uh work on. Um, but ideally we know what he does best and, and him in space, you know, you talk about a, a linebacker um being abused in the NFL by these these athletic tight ends these days, um, um, but look look at look at Jabril in space. You know, sticks with the with the tight end. Yeah, I mean, he's right in his back pocket. Um, you're talking about watching linebackers. Can you see some? Yeah, I mean, could you see TJ Edwards do that or? Um, I think I think the the strength as well, like you know, Davion Taylor was a raw prospect too. Like he's got the speed and the theory, you know. But like I feel like he he looks comfortable uh, in space over here. This play is one he was on uh, North Dakota, constantly making plays, uh, diagnosing the play, and just stepping up and taking to the house. I know he had a couple touchdowns he brought back uh, while at NDSU. You know, just kind of like, basically, just jumps the route. He sees, he sees what, he, trusts what he sees, takes it up, takes it back to the house. Right here again in space, he just, just harassing your tight ends. Uh, that's what I label this one. Just expect him to harass your tight end. Um, I actually, I actually had the same play that you had uh, over here. Just, you know, just again, man, he just shows up. This play right here is just perfect. Like if I'm if I'm an NFL team, I'm just like, man, this dude, his size and just his ability to just uh look fluid in space. And that looks natural. Him trying to like 
make some of these uh, run plays. You know, he he did. You know, he he did uh, come in, make some um, tackles, and threaten the QB. So get some pressure off the edge. Do I think he's? Do you, do I think we're going to be able to get him in in on in the third round? I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I mean, his his stock after the Senior Bowl was up because he really looked better as a tackler, especially against such uh, incredible athletes at the Senior Bowl. I mean, he's asked to defend in space against the pass and run, and he looked really good in drills, and he looked really good at the actual Senior Bowl as well. And, I mean, people just watched, like, an absolute clinic when it comes to linebacker play with uh, Devin White in the Super Bowl. Devin White was an absolute monster, and he's a big reason why Tampa Bay won that Super Bowl. And now every team knows that they're going against a Kelsey and a Waller, uh, and everyone's looking for a Kelsey or a Waller now, really. I mean, that's why the Eagles are interested in Kyle Pitts. That's why a bunch of NFL teams are interested in Kyle Pitts. And the Eagles next year, they verse Kelsey and Waller. So they might need a guy like Jabril Cox to be out there in the slot to cover those two. And that's why he's a really interesting prospect to us because there aren't too many safeties that are athletic or big enough to cover a guy like Waller or Kelsey. And there's definitely no corner other than maybe Jalen Ramsey that's athletic and big enough to cover them. That's why you need linebackers like Jabril Cox to cover these tight ends and all the tight ends are becoming into the league like a Kyle Pitts that teams are really looking for to make mismatches. Overall, I just can't wait to see what he runs. I'm, I'm very interested yeah. to see how fast he is as a linebacker. I mean, if he runs, if he runs pretty fast, dude, like if he runs the four fours, uh, that'll be something to that'll be something to be uh, looked at. Uh, this this is the final play that I had. Um, this is him at the Senior Bowl. Uh, you think about uh, you know if you got a guy on the backside chasing you down, the speed just shows up, man. Flying around, I think overall as a prospect, an athletic um, player in space. Um, I, I think he's a leader in the locker room. He, he's a competitive guy. You know, going from NDSU and then taking his talents to LSU, I thought that was uh, a big deal. I think you know, taking on that that, that challenge, uh, he had a, like I think sixty plus teams looking at him uh, when he was available, made available, um, and then just going to LSU on a he he didn't get he didn't get time to check out the the school at all via you know since since the COVID situation uh, and just. All right, I'm going to LSU, uh, and I think I think he got his money's worth, and uh, I think uh, he he made a right decision. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, LSU is coming off a national championship, and even though they had a down year as a team, the coaches there they care about their athletes. They make sure that these guys. And even if they aren't going to go to the next level, that they're prepared for the next level because they just keep on producing on both sides of the ball. I mean, wide receivers wise. LSU keeps putting out top tier talent and these guys are way ahead of people when they get to the league linebackers and cornerbacks and safeties. They're way ahead of people. I mean, do you see polished projects out of LSU all the time? You see the Jarvis Landry, you see the Odell Beckham juniors, the Tyran Matthew, the linemen. I mean, they, it, it was just a matter of time for them to win a national championship. They just needed a, uh, a quarterback because their skill position guys and linebackers, they kept on winning Pro Bowls in the NFL. And hopefully Jabril Cox is just that. He's going to be a really solid linebacker at the next level because he's exactly what teams are looking for in a coverage linebacker to cover these dynamic tight ends and slot guys. You know, Jabril Cox, linebacker out of NDSU and LSU, that new age type of linebacker. That's what he is, man. Uh, a great, great player in space. But for Chris uh, and, and myself, uh, this is Talk the Prospect. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this prospect. If you guys have any other prospect you want us to look at, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, we'll be sure to look at uh, more players. And, and this is going to be, uh, we're, we're trying to do our homework here. Hopefully you guys are subscribed and, and dialed in just like we are. That's all for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, fly. Eagles fly.